On this episode of China Uncensored, China's propaganda targets the heart of America, Iowa. Wait, Iowa? Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. When I heard about the four-page spread called China Watch run in Iowa's biggest newspaper, the Des Moines Register, I thought, well, look at that adorable little kid with that adorable robot. Surely there's nothing sinister about this. China Watch is a paid supplement, that is, an advertisement, designed to look like news articles. And they've got great content like about the book that tells of Xi Jinping's fun days in Iowa in the 1980s, and the part about women's liberation, how feminine face of China changed. Who writes this stuff? Oh wait, China Daily, an official publication of the People's Republic of China. And there's also this helpful front page article, Dual Undermines Benefits of Trade. Yes, Trump's trade war is bad for you, the good people of Iowa. That's why we paid tons of money for this benevolent public service announcement, coincidentally, right before U.S. midterm elections. I mean, imagine if the U.S. government paid to put anti-Xi Jinping propaganda in a provincial newspaper in China right before China's midterm elections. For those of you who are new here, China does not have national elections. And the price for putting articles critical of China's leader in a local newspaper would be going to prison. Anyway, placing propaganda in Iowa's biggest newspaper is one small piece of the Chinese Communist Party's plan to undermine farm country support for the Trump administration and its tough trade policies with respect to China. It also takes advantage of America's democratic process and free press. Now granted, the Chinese regime wanted people in Iowa to read it, but they probably didn't expect President Trump would. China is actually placing propaganda ads in the Des Moines Register and other papers made to look like news, Trump tweeted. Iowa is a crucial state in presidential elections. It went big for Trump in 2016. But now, the trade war between the world's two largest economies is heating up, and Iowa exports corn, soy, and pork to China. The U.S. just announced tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports. And that's on top of the $50 billion in goods the U.S. already hit with earlier tariffs. The tariffs are meant to be a response to years of unfair trade practices by China that include allegations of state-sponsored intellectual property theft, like Chinese spies stealing corn seeds from Iowa. Hmm, no articles about that in China Watch. The U.S. ambassador to China is Terry Branstad, who also happens to be Iowa's former governor. He criticized the China Watch advertorial in a letter, saying that China is doubling down on their bullying by running propaganda ads in our free press. But not to worry, says Trump. We are beating them on trade, opening markets, and the farmers will make a fortune when this is over. The trouble is, until the trade war is settled, China's $50 billion of retaliatory tariffs, soon to increase to $110 billion, could mean pain for Iowa's exporters. The tariffs and the counter-tariffs that we're enduring in this trade war between China and the United States is having a real impact on Iowa farmers. According to an Iowa State University study, Iowa farmers are projected to lose up to $2.2 billion from Chinese counter-tariffs. Is that a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. It's a big number. That's John Crespi, an economics professor at Iowa State and co-author of the study. He said the trade war could cost Iowa's soybean industry up to $891 million, and Iowa's corn industry could lose as much as $579 million. Because the Chinese regime isn't just targeting the good people of Iowa with badly written newspaper advertorials. They also created tariffs on corn, soy, pork, and other agricultural products that hurt Midwestern farmers. Conveniently, also the people who tend to vote for Trump and the Republicans. Former U.S. National Security Council spokesperson Tommy Veter called it a pretty savvy political play being run by China. That article, Dual Undermines Benefits of Trade, warns that Chinese importers may have to turn to South America as their go-to soybean source. So basically, the Chinese regime imposes tariffs that hurt farmers in pro-Trump states. Then they say it's Trump's fault. And then, maybe those farmers will think twice about voting for Trump in the next election. 
It's like you put a banana peel on the ground so someone slips on it. And then you tell them, hey, it's Chiquita's fault for making products with slippery peels. That's why you, the good people of Iowa, should remember that as long as Trump is president, it will cost both countries in terms of innovation and economic performance. Yes, for you Iowa farmers, this trade war will definitely not be fun. You know what would be fun though? Another visit to Iowa by Chinese leader Xi Jinping, whose last visit to Iowa was very fun. Joking aside, Iowa is actually kind of famous in China because of Xi's visits there. Arguably more famous than Iowa is in the US, where people often confuse it with Idaho. And it didn't just start with Xi. Iowa has been establishing ties with China since the 1970s. Last year, the Des Moines Register did a series of stories on Iowa's ties to China, including one on the Iowa Mafia, a close group of Iowans doing business in Beijing. You don't want to double cross the Iowa mob. They'll break your kneecaps with corn cobs. 10% of students at the University of Iowa are from China and they contribute about $170 million to the local economy. China's even building a friendship farm outside Beijing that will include a Disney-style version of a small town in Iowa. A Disney-style small town in Iowa? I hope they have singing pigs. Speaking of small towns in Iowa, Muscatine is the town where Xi Jinping visited in 1985, and which has seen a lot of Chinese investment in the last few years. Last month, Chinese officials visited Muscatine and commiserated about the trade war. Iowa is a place with a decades-long relationship with China. It's gotten a lot of positive attention from Chinese officials, and it has an economy that's increasingly tied to doing business with China. Sounds like the perfect place for the Chinese Communist Party to start changing how Americans feel about the U.S.-China trade war. But it might not be as easy as Chinese officials are hoping. When the Washington Post talked to farmers in Muscatine, they found farmers were concerned about things like intellectual property theft and supported the U.S. taking a stronger stand. And take the China Watch advertorial. Even the Des Moines Register, which ran the China Watch advertorial, pulled no punches in exposing the true intent of their big advertiser. It quotes an expert saying that readers may not appreciate trying to be manipulated by a foreign government. But China's information war against the U.S. goes way beyond running ads in corn country newspapers. For years, they've run China Watch sections in major national papers like the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal to influence public opinion. I mean, really, it's the original fake news. And a U.S. official told Reuters that China is guilty of perpetrating a broad malign influence campaign in the United States. They employ a whole-of-government approach using political, economic, commercial, military, and informational tools to influence U.S. public opinion. Now, there does seem to be a bright side in all this for Iowa farmers. To offset the impact of China's tariffs, the Trump administration announced in July that U.S. farmers will be helped with a $12 billion bailout, and Iowa growers could see about $550 million in the first round of federal aid. And at least some of that money is going to come from, that's right, tariffs on Chinese goods. So what do you think of China's propaganda advertorial? Will it affect U.S. elections? Leave your comments below. And before we go, it's time when I answer a question from a viewer who supports China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Rabbit L. Benke asks, Hey Chris, some big drivers of the tariffs are the demands that China stop stealing American intellectual property and stop requiring joint ventures with Chinese firms. But did American entrepreneurs ever even lobby or ask the U.S. government to do something about it? Good question, Rabbit. American businesses have actually complained about China stealing intellectual property for years. This article from 2005 talks about how China was creating cheap knockoffs of Viagra, which is a blood pressure medication. They wanted the Bush administration to act, but ultimately their response proved to be a bit impotent. Meanwhile, Chinese theft of U.S. intellectual property escalated. Some U.S. companies continued to complain. Others kept quiet because they wanted the opportunity to do more business in China. But it seemed neither the Bush nor Obama administrations were able to do much to change the situation. 
By 2015, it had gotten so bad that President Obama and Xi Jinping made a very public agreement to stop stealing commercial secrets. And this sort of worked, but not as well as people hoped. Because when U.S. companies get hacked, the Chinese government would issue public statements like, it totally wasn't us, it was rogue hackers. And how do you even know they were from China, huh? Now President Trump has a different philosophy, which is put direct economic pressure on China until the Chinese leadership feels enough pain to rein in the problem themselves. So far, there's been pain on both sides from the trade war, but it's not clear yet what the ultimate outcome will be. Thanks for your question, Rabbit. And thank all of you for watching. Be like Rabbit and support China Uncensored with a dollar or more per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time. Want your question answered? Of course you do. Click this orange button and sign up to support China Uncensored by pledging a dollar or more per episode on patreon.com slash China Uncensored. There's lots of cool perks, and one of them is having me potentially answer your questions at the end of my episodes. Click here to support the show.